Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We've completed our version 2 of our task list, and that version used Ajax calls instead of doing full page reloads. Now we want to start working on version 3. And so the question is, what is version 3? What are we going to update here? So version 2 did Ajax calls, but the Ajax calls themselves returned things like this. They were HTML pages. So that was our login page. The task list page looked like this. And so they were partial pages that were given back that were then stuck into a website. And while this works well enough for doing things with a website, this is not how modern web applications work, in part because the back ends of modern web applications are often built to work not just with web applications. They can also work with mobile apps. If you had a desktop equivalent, they could work with that. They're generally fairly agnostic about the way in which data is displayed. Also, by, by doing things where you send data back and forth, you have a better separation of concerns. We've made it so our server is remarkably responsible for formatting out how things display on the client. And, and that's not necessarily ideal. It would be better to have the client decide how it's going to display information and the server just provide it with the data that's going to be displayed. And so it's more standard in modern web apps that the communication is just sending data back and forth between the client and the server. And the, that data is generally in the form of JSON. And so we are going to work on making it so the communication back and forth is happening in JSON instead of in the form of HTML, and then have the, the page be kind of dynamically built uh, in JavaScript, at least for, for version 3, over on the client side. Now, one of the things that probably immediately jumps out to you is this is not Eclipse. Okay, I have switched to using VS Code. Uh, one downside of this is VS Code does not understand the views at the level that Eclipse did. Eclipse actually kind of understood uh, play. I have the Metals extension here. Metals gives the capability to VS Code. Uh, it's a generic language server. It gives it the ability to understand Scala, and so it does a great job with standard Scala files. But with the, the view files, it's not as uh, as capable of giving you error reports here. Fortunately, when you have errors, Play tells you that. To install metals, you just go to extensions and search for metals and, and add that in. And when you open the folder for the, the project, it will ask if you want to import that build. And for example, all of the Java files. So for example, our controllers here, they get nice help for us. They tell you the types of things. And if we put syntax errors in them, you get syntax highlighting uh, that shows you where the errors are. OK. Uh, in addition, I have updated this a little bit. I have updated to Play 2.8. I have updated to Scala version 2.11. And because we're going to be using JSON to send stuff back and forth, I have included Play JSON. Uh, 2.81 to go with the play 2.8. Okay, so those are some of the things that I've done in between videos here. How are we going to start working on version 3? So we have all of our routes here for version 1 and for version 2. Eh, I'm probably going to need some routes for version 3. I will need to have something that starts off with just the original screen, much like what happened with, with version 2, controllers.tasklist3, and we'll call that method load, as we did for version 2, we'll be consistent there. I'm also, just to see how things work, I'm going to put another git in here temporarily that We'll call it just data. I don't have any routes called data yet. 
Uh, but I want to play with this so that we can see what it's like to pull back data in a JSON format and what we need uh, to do for that. Okay, so given those routes, we need to go ahead and make task list three. It does not exist yet. Let's make a new file tasklist3.scala. I will at least start off by copying the initial declarations in task list two and change the name of task list two to task list three. And I need my two endpoints on the routes. I need a load and a data. So def load equals to do and def data equals to do. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure that this actually works. So there's my load three. And if I load this in, it compiles and I get the to do page, which I happen to have there. Previously, version two does that version three does that. Okay, it's working as we expect. I want the data, we'll come back to the load and get the initial page later, but that's actually very similar to things that we've done before. For data though, I want to give back something that is like the data that we need to send back from our app. So our model right now, this model is actually remarkably simple. I don't have any special case classes for it. In fact, I'm going to add some of that just so that we can see how how we can do this with the play JSON. But in this first video, note that you know we have we're sending in two strings and we have a Boolean. Uh, we get back a sequence of strings. Okay, so when the client asks for the tasks for a particular user, we need to send them back a sequence of strings. Uh, yeah, and then these other things are going to wind up responding with sequences of strings. So it seems like the sequence of string is kind of, for our simple app right now, the main thing that we'd want to send back in JSON. So what if we just make a sequence of string? Now, of course, this is not exactly the type of sequence of string that we have. And the problem is you can't wrap an OK around just a sequence of string. Okay, so that's, that's unhappy. Um, I don't want this to be just sequence. I need to make it into JSON. Okay, so the play JSON, there is a JSON. Notice the capitalization here. This will be uh, potentially significant in, in the future. So JavaScript, when you, the JSON object that you can call methods on like stringify and whatnot uh, is all caps. The play, the play JSON version is a capital J and lowercase uh, son. There is a to JSON method that you can call, and we can just pass it our sequence. And now this compiles. And because this is JSON, it turns out that when this comes through, It won't be seen as an HTML page, it is seen as JSON, and this in JSON is an array. Oh, uh, just for funsies, we could try doing a quick Ajax call. So we could fetch localhost, actually probably just do slash data, because we're already on this page, then our result rocket res dot how about we do json um dot then an object json and note this is the one that's all caps dot stringify of the object a promise that is pending. Um, hmm, why did that come out 
as pending. Oh, because I didn't, I really wanted to do a console.log of this to output it. I don't really care too much about the promise itself. And there you go. So it got this back, ABC. Uh, what would have happened if I hadn't stringified the object? If I just console.log of the object, Chrome does a nice job of formatting this for us. Uh, if we had been in a non-Chrome environment, there's a pretty good chance this would have just said object, uh, which isn't all that helpful to us, but it gives us information about the array that came through. So there's the stringified version, there's the full object version. We've just verified that we can use Ajax calls, in this case I'm using the standard fetch Ajax call, to get data that we send from a route where we use the play JSON to encode it. So we'll come back in the next video and we will work on pushing this further, getting a load page and trying to send back data that's relevant, also probably having the load page send us data that is, is in a, a more interesting format, perhaps.